Good morning and welcome to another Tuesday tour. It's John Sauter along with Michael Fairchild behind the camera. Today bringing you a show that it's going to highlight significant accomplishments of Purdue faculty, staff and leadership that made all these accomplishments possible. And I think you're really going to like this show. It's going to make every Boilermaker proud of these accomplishments. Um, I kind of call it Purdue by the numbers because we're going to talk about numbers and the areas we're going to talk about are astronauts, university presidents, Nobel Prize winners, World Food Prize winners, and quarterbacks. So we're going to be jumping around campus. I think uh, you'll be able to follow us on a campus map and see where we're going around campus as we kind of summarize these, these really high, highlights, these highlights that uh, in a format that's uh, probably not been done before. So here we are in the Dalk Alumni Center and there's a, a great display of our uh, astronauts, the Cradle of Astronauts. And so the Cradle of Astronauts and the number here is 25. 25 uh, Purdue alumni have gone on to become astronauts. And so we want to kind of quickly go through those for you. Uh, I would highlight uh, Gus Grissom. He was the second man in space. As a matter of fact, he kind of got us launched. Of course, Neil Armstrong, he's number one. He was the first man on the moon. Uh, Gene Cernan uh, was in the program also. And Gene, of course, uh, was the most recent man on the moon as he preferred uh, it being referred to. And as we kind of make our way down the list, Jerry Ross. Jerry Ross, you see the stars out here, they represent the number of flights. And so he, for a while, had the record, I think he's tied it now, for the most number of, of uh, missions of any of the astronauts in the program, and certainly of the Purdue astronauts. And we work our way on down, we get to Janice Voss, she went on five missions. Uh, Janice was one of my favorites. She wanted to be the first female in space, she didn't quite make it, but she was our first female astronaut from Purdue. Uh, really got to know Janice and her family, I was so fortunate, she invited me down to witness her very first launch. So I was there with all the families and you got to uh, feel the concussion of the shuttle as it took off. Just a very exciting moment, uh, certainly in my career and I suspect hers. Andrew Foistel. Drew Foistel, he and his wife Indy, lovely couple. Uh, Drew is known for repairing the Hubble telescope. Um, and uh, uh, also perhaps holds one of the more unique uh, experiences up in the International Space Station. He actually received his honorary PhD degree from Purdue. So I remember being at the commencement as they cut to the International Space Station. President Daniels read the, the, the necessary words and he was actually hooded. And we have a nice picture of that also. He was actually hooded in the International Space Station. Just a great, just a great experience. And then lastly, I would point out our most recent, Beth Moses. She's actually our first commercial uh, astronaut trained somewhat at NASA, but actually now works for Virgin Galactic uh, as one of their astronauts. Uh, great display that we have, and if you come here and you need to sometime, you want to make sure you stop by and see all the different patches. And uh, the way it works is the astronauts on the mission get to design their own patch. And so typically they'll have their names on them, like here's one from Gene Cernan. Uh, this is the one, Apollo 11, this is the patch. Uh, from Neil Armstrong's uh, mission when they landed on the moon. So just a great display. We're really proud of our 25 astronauts. I hope you are too. We're now on to our next site. We have made our way across campus a little bit and we're now in the Great Hall in the Purdue Memorial Union Building. Here we want to talk about university presidents, and the operative number here is 12. Uh, an impressive number in that we've uh, been in existence over 150 years, only 12 presidents, starting with Richard Owen. Richard Owen was the state geologist down in Indianapolis, stepped forward to help the university get organized. He and John Perdue did not see eye to eye on quite a few things, and he resigned after 19 months which brought us to Abraham Shortridge. Abraham Shortridge, Shortridge High School in Indianapolis, named for him. He was our second president, credited with getting our classes started in 1874. The first class met then. 
We'll skip a few and we end up on James Smart. James Smart, our fourth president. James Smart, known mostly probably for, uh, uh, for helping start the Big Ten Athletic Conference. Perhaps though, for you Boilermakers, he's the one who, he's the one who uttered the phrase, we will rebuild this building one brick higher. And still the rallying cry for doing more than expected. James Smart made that happen. I want to jump then next to uh, Edward C. Elliott here in the corner. And with Edward Elliott, you always rub his nose, obviously, for good luck. Uh, Edward Elliott, uh, together with uh, R.B. Stewart, perhaps one of his best hiring decisions, really uh, had the university growing by leaps and bounds. But of course, maybe mostly known for bringing Amelia Earhart to campus uh, during his tenure. Uh, our sixth president, Edward Elliott. Um, I jump next to uh, Arthur Hansen. Arthur Hansen, our eighth president, he was uh, the only alumnus to become president of the university, uh, the first president to live on campus in Westwood, uh, and more uniquely, as we found out in our last video, he actually had his pilot's license. He was the only uh, president to actually fly. Uh, he was succeeded then by Steve Bering, gifted speaker, really made, uh, made us all feel so loyal, just a great guy to work for. Um, followed by Martin Jiski. Martin Jiski, he and Patty still live in town. Martin taught us the meaning of the word preeminence, quality, everything needed to be the best it can be. And we worked hard and we really achieved that under the quality model that Martin Jiski brought to this campus. Um, we have 12 presidents, we only have 11 busts here. That's because Mitch Daniels, he has yet to arrive here. Uh, he's still in, uh, still in operation, uh, known for quite a few things, uh, perhaps for freezing tuition for eight years in a row now, and maybe even more to come. And if you've got uh, sons or daughters or grandkids here, you really appreciate that. Um, the key to produce success, the right president at the right time, making the right decisions. And so far, it's really worked well. You can be proud of the leadership that has enabled all the variety of accomplishments we're talking about to take place. So now it's uh, on to the next stop. We are at our next point of pride as we talk about significant accomplishments on campus and we are in the Weatherall Chemistry Building. And here we want to talk about Nobel Prize winners. The operative word is two. And so first is Herbert Brown, received the Nobel Prize in Chemistry in 1979 for his work with boron and the variety of compounds connected to it. Um, our first, and then he was followed somewhat shortly thereafter in 2010 by E.C. Nagishi, pictured here. Uh, Herbert Brown has passed on, E.C. Nagishi still in town. Actually, I see him at the grocery store once in a while. And uh, his uh, prize in chemistry was won, won for, uh, in my simple terms, having to do with the coupling of carbon atoms. He found a process to do that and uh, became quite renowned around the world for that particular process and rewarded. The neat thing about this display is they actually have a replica of the Nobel Prize medal itself. And so there's uh, Alfred Nobel right there on the front of it. And if you give it a little twist, it goes around to the back. And there's an, uh, some, some more inscriptions there, and it's in Swedish. However, interpreted it reads, it is beneficial to have improved human life through discovered art. Very proud of our two Nobel Prize winners. We hope you'll come back and see this display right here in the chemistry building. On to the next site. We have now made our way across campus again, and now we're in the Ag Administration Building to highlight our, uh, our, our next point of pride, and that are World Food Prize winners. This is kind of the Nobel Prize in the uh, area of agriculture. And we have three of those. That's the operative number, three. And the first of those, Phil Nelson. Phil won in 2007. Uh, he won for uh, work that he had done relative to uh, the storage and the transportation of fresh produce, uh, short distances and particularly around the world. 
and was recognized with the World Food Prize. Very inspirational quote, talking about how Purdue provides the education and environment that encourages the renovation, innovation, and the things that he was involved with. 2007, Phil Nelson. And across the hallway, we have the second winner, and that's, that's Gabisa Agenta. He won the prize in 2009. Um, uh, again, both very nice families, and I mentioned in many of these uh, Tuesday tours, everybody on campus tends to know each other. Uh, Phil Nelson, his son, was in my daughter's high school class at Westside High School, and Gabisa, four lovely daughters, and they all babysat for our grandkids. His wife worked for us in food service, and so it's really a cl close, connected family. So, so proud of these folks. But uh, Gabisa Agenta won for his uh, uh, research on sorghum and making it drought resistant and disease resistant. A significant accomplishment uh, for Africa and, and becoming a, a food source. And again, his quote talks about the culture of research that is available at Purdue University. Um, that actually made that possible. And then uh, we want to conclude with a third winner, and that uh, just happened in 2017. We don't have a display for him yet, unfortunately, and that's Aiken Adonisia. I think I'm saying that right. And he is uh, president of the African Development Group, which is uh, focused on the agriculture sector. And in the picture that, you're, that you'll be seeing here, uh, he's actually the one with the green bow tie between the other two. And so he won in 2017, three winners of the World Food Prize uh, that we're all very, very proud of. On to the next site. Okay, we are back uh, at our fifth location on campus. We uh, went out on the edge of campus by the football stadium in the Kozak Football Performance Complex. Um, generally open to the public and not right now, but uh, a great display here as we talk about Purdue's cradle of quarterbacks. And the operative number there is 12. 12 have been recognized, actually more have played in the NFL, but these 12 are recognized. Uh, for their uh, distinguished accomplishments. Uh, many of them have set uh, NCAA and Big Ten records. And uh, so we just want to kind of walk through some of these because I think you're quite familiar with a lot of them. Uh, Bob DeMoss started us off uh, as a quarterback and later a coach, just a great guy to be around. Uh, Dale Samuels, uh, we still see he and Don, uh, Don once in a while. Uh, Lenny Dawson, the golden boy. That's why we got a golden girl, because he was the golden boy. He is actually one of three of the quarterbacks who have actually won Super Bowls. So Lenny Dawson, Bob Greasy, and our current favorite, Drew Brees. All three have won Super Bowls. Um, Mike Phipps, very popular. Gary Danielson. When I first got to Purdue, Gary lived in Wiley Hall, got to see him on a regular basis. Again, you start knowing some of these guys on a, on a fairly personal basis. Mark Herman set an NCAA record. He was the first quarterback to pass for 8,000 yards and then 9,000 yards uh, in his career. Uh, Scott Campbell, Jim Everett, Drew Brees, our favorite. He's the one right behind us here. Uh, just retired and certainly headed for the, for the Hall of Fame. Uh, Kyle Orton and Curtis Painter, uh, all included in the cradle of quarterbacks uh, for Purdue. So we've gone from the cradle of astronauts to the cradle of quarterbacks and prize winners in between. Um, we hope you've enjoyed this. We hope you feel the pride that we all feel about these Boilermakers and all they have done and their accomplishments along the way. That's what we try to do with these Tuesday tours. So we hope you've enjoyed this one and uh, we'll see you next time. Hail Purdue.